It's time to take a new approach to finding true fulfillment in your career, health, and state of mind through insightful conversations with those who have found their professional and personal passions while achieving balance. Whether it's entrepreneurs, athletes, or healthcare professionals, we bring you real people, real growth, right here on the Boost Podcast. Now, here's your host, Elena Lipson. Hey, Boost Squad, and welcome to episode 40. Elena Lipson here, and I'm so excited to introduce today's featured guest, Sherry Torres. Sherry, are you ready to join the Boost Squad? Yes, I am. So before we dive into today's episode, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Mosaic Growth Partners. Mosaic Growth Partners provides growth strategy consulting to entrepreneurs and organizations in the healthcare and older adult baby boomer market. They can help you bring a new product or service to market, identify and engage new customers and partners, or grow your market share. They also provide coaching and training. For more information, go to mosaicgrowth.com. That's M-O-S-A-I-C-G-R-O-W-T-H dot com. Now back to today's featured guest. So Sherry is a registered nurse from Hawaii, and she's worked in a large healthcare system there for 20 years. She acts as a utilization manager and has witnessed firsthand how technology has helped one of the largest providers in the nation improve their workflow and referral management processes. Sherry, I have so many questions that I want to ask you today, so I'm just going to dive right on in. Okay. First, can you tell us what are the three things that we should know about being a utilization manager? Well, the first thing is basically UM nurses are very data driven. I think, well, in this world and in the healthcare business, you know, as as everybody knows, it is a, a lot of data that has to be gathered, but also leadership needs to be able to look at that and see where to go next. Uh, how can we improve our patient care and where our gaps are, but also where our successes are. So as a utilization manager, I think the, the biggest thing is that I do run a lot of reports. I do help with gathering the data. And really, uh, as a nurse, it's kind of a nice combination because I know some of the, I guess, the IT side, but it can also marry that with my clinical background as far as what kind of data our leadership is looking at. So basically, I'm looking at trends and really trying to see how we can improve our care and how do we utilize our resources better. Great. And can you talk a little bit about how this can be really helpful when you're managing care transitions? Oh, yeah. So care transitions has always been a hot topic. So basically, one of the utilization statistics that's really important in today's world is utilization of the ERs and the hospitals, because as we all know, nobody wants to be there, but also it costs a lot of money to have members there. And we really don't want them there as much as possible. We want them to be well enough to be able to come home. So the utilization statistics that I look at is the percentage of our population or how many um, members each quarter, you know, go in and out of the hospital, how many of them get readmitted within 30 days, you'll hear those buzzwords, 30 day readmission rate, or um, length of stay is another terminology that the healthcare business uses to see how long a member on average stays in the hospital. So if I can gather that information and really dig deep as to why, what's the biggest reason why people are going in and out of the hospital, then we can be more proactive while they're in the hospital, or even once step further before they get into the hospital so that they don't have those abrupt transitions from home to the ER to the hospital. And now, you know, things at home in the social situation gets, you know, a wreck because let's say the the primary caregiver uh, of a member or even the the breadwinner of the family is now in the hospital. So that can cause a lot of, you know, pain and heartache for the family. So what we really want to do is look at those statistics so that, you know, say if somebody has cancer, we would prefer that their transition throughout their cancer treatment not be, you know, going to the ER in and out and then to the hospital and then staying in the hospital for a long time. We would prefer that most of their care is at home and uh, we bring the care 
care to them so that they can be more comfortable or if they choose to be in a hospice, we can help with that transition as well. But really looking at everything as a whole and and looking at the members holistically, not just medically, is really important to, you'll hear the buzzword, social determinants of health, which is really important in coordinating the care for a member. So, you know, looking at all that, we can help members transition more smoothly, um, depending on where they're at in the stage of their disease. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And, you know, you mentioned a little bit. So one of the things that you look at with care transitions are why are people going into the hospital? Can you talk a little bit about some of the leading reasons that you've seen about why people get admitted? Yeah, so uh, there is a high incidence of what we call um, behavioral health issues. So when they have some kind of psychiatric condition, then those are the members that kind of go in and out. Uh, We do see a lot of oncology patients or patients with cancer just because of the nature of the disease. Those were the top two that I could think of right now. Okay, great. You also talked a bit about making sure that the transition into the community and back home is smooth and comfortable for the member. Can you talk a little bit about what are the key needs that you need to facilitate in connecting members with community resources? Yeah, so a a lot of times, now depending on, it depends on the member's insurance, right? What's covered, what's not covered, and also the member's finances. So for them to be transitioned from the hospital to home, you know, it's about affordability and it's about accessibility. So those two things that would connect the member to a provider who can provide services in their home, or even if they go to, they choose to go to a facility, or sometimes they don't choose, but they have to, (laughs) so they will go to a facility. But again, where is the money going to come from? And where is the availability, you know, where's the available bed? Mm -hmm. So I, I think those two are really important to look at and are barriers a lot of times too. Yeah, I mean, do you find um, in Hawaii that there is a limited availability of beds in certain regions, or is that not as much of an issue as the affordability piece? Oh, no, you hit it on the head, yeah. Availability of resources is scarce. As you know, we live on an island, so we're kind of landlocked here, and and it's it gets really hard to find uh, a certain resource at a certain time frame. You know, if we need it like now <laughs> or even a week from now, it doesn't happen all the time because of the limited resources. Does that result in then more people being admitted to the hospital because these other places of care are just not available? Yes, definitely. Or or their the length of stay in the hospital is longer. That's kind of the the other issue. So I imagine that technology is probably playing an increasingly large role in your work um, as you're doing a lot of work with data, you're running a lot of reports. And I'd love to hear what you found to be the best approach when you're incorporating technology tools to improve care coordination, particularly in the context of care transitions. There's a lot of work with gathering the information up front. I mean, that I think was the it is a, a big job to do when you have when you're looking into leveraging technology and what goes into it, which is hard because a lot of us, you know, we do use technology to a certain extent, but we are still tied to paper <laughs> a lot of times, and just making that transition is hard sometimes. Yeah, could you give me an example of um, maybe part of your workflow that's very paper? dependent right now and how technology might make that easier or reduce potential medical errors or duplication of services? Right. Well, actually, we're working with LiveWell, which is a company that helped us to build a website. And it's like a website such database of information that clinicians, so mostly social workers and nurses, can use to tap into community resources. So for instance, currently we all have our own little spreadsheets or post-it notes at our desk, or we have our little, you know, contact, little black books, if you will, that we use to to access when we have a member that needs a certain type of resource. Uh, but the problem or the challenge is that there's no one central repository right now to to access so that everybody can see the same thing or maybe share 
you know, different things that they found out because the time it takes to build a, a directory, it, it can take years, you know, or, or just takes um, who you know or who you heard about, you know, through the grapevine. And so everybody's list is going to look different. Well, what we hired LiveWell to do is to help us put that all together for us um, and make it really easy. It's kind of like information at your fingertips, you know, like you go online and you just want to find a, a personal care assistance company or a home care aid company. It's much more faster to just type that in and let it pop up, you know, a whole list for you rather than, you know, kind of looking at your list and then comparing, calling your colleague about another list or, you know, even if, if there's phone books out there still, you know, like looking at a phone book or e even Googling, you know, sometimes it's just there's just so much out there that it helps to have something that's more filtered and catered to our needs. And we'll just filter out things that we don't need, you know. Yeah. And what Sherry's describing is really not unique to just the system that she's working in. If you haven't been on the inside of a provider network or a health system, it's almost like shocking how much is done on paper and post-it notes and spreadsheets. And if you can imagine, <laughs> it, it really, it's, it's not the best process to ensure the best quality care and the safety of the patients. And so a lot of health systems, you know, are struggling with like, how do they move towards a technological solution that's going to, you know, not totally disrupt their whole workflow and make it easier, but, and also be affordable. And so, you know, I'm glad you brought LiveWell up. For those who don't know, LiveWell Health is a technology enabled services provider that assists seniors to live independently at home and also families who are seeking assistance in their care. So I want to dive into that a little bit more, Sherry. I would love to learn more about your experience working with LiveWell, you know, just starting in the very beginning, talking about the program development and what your team's current workflow was like before LiveWell. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're still working with them, but I can say honestly, you know, from the beginning, it was just an exciting experience. I mean, to be able to go from <laughs> hundreds of paper driven processes to to technology or, or something, you know, more quicker, easier, more efficient was just exciting. So the things that they showed us, the capabilities of a website that they've actually already built was, was exciting from the beginning. I think, you know, through it, to be honest, you know, the, the hard work and the, I guess the tedious part of it really was having to gather all the different, the, the information from all the different providers that we wanted uploaded. Because as you can imagine, I mean, Hawaii is small. So, you know, even if we were on a bigger scale, you know, you have thousands of providers uh, that you would want to put in the database so that the user can have that access, but somebody has to put it in there. Right. right? So working together with the live well team i think that was you know it's just it's just time consuming you know it's not hard it's just something you have to do in order to get to the end result but you know once we pushed through that i think working with them you know we kind of split up the work which is really nice because looking at a spreadsheet for even an hour can can make your eyes tired and you know oh, i brain, know <laughs> <laughs> your brain fried is kind of what i always tell them oh my gosh my brain is fried can somebody else take a look at this you know, so so that's kind of the journey that we took in the beginning. But once we had that data loaded, once we were able to get to, you know, what that user interface was going to look like, I mean, that was, again, you know, the more exciting part to, to be able to be a part of building something that people are going to be like, wow, that's cool. Or, you know, that's going to help me in my work. And now I don't have to worry about you know, taking the time to look things up uh, in in other ways or calling, you know, if making phone calls um, takes time because you have to, you know, make sure they answer the phone. If they don't, you got to call back or they need to call you back or even emails, you know, back and forth. Everybody's working on their own time scheduled uh, schedules. So it's harder to connect, I think. But in the internet or using technology, it's, it's usually faster, not always, because <laughs> there's still a human behind it. But it was just it was a really exciting experience. And then now we're actually at the phase we're done with the testing, we actually deployed it 
And we're just, you know, making sure that everybody who logs on and is be- being able to use it is not encountering any problems. So it was a really fun, yet also uh, tedious and, <laughs> you know, a lot of work, but like anything else, you know, no pain, no gain kind of thing. And we're at the point where we're really just trying to you know, I guess, put the curtains up in the house, you know, we're really just kind of decorating or making sure that everybody's able to use it the way it's supposed to be used. And at the same time, constantly taking feedback, you know, with anything new that you build or anything that you is a change, right, for staff or anybody, it takes time and and we have to kind of refine it and, and change things as we go along. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Great. So I have a few questions. So you mentioned kind of the tedious and time consuming nature of this. And unfortunately, that's just a reality of any time you yeah. go to a paper based <laughs> process to something that's um, more technology based. Can you give us an estimate of like how long that took for you all to get all of that information from the different providers uploaded into the system? Well, I mean, it kind of went in phases because, you know, as we go through the process Or as we went through the process, we realized that we were missing information or some of the information that we provided was incorrect or outdated. So I would say, I mean, the initial phase of gathering the information, sending it to LiveWell for them to have to put it in, I mean, that's weeks to months. I want to say months, you know, maybe like a couple of months to really make sure that we have a um, comprehensive list and an accurate list. That's that's the two things. You want to make sure you have everything you want, but then you also have to make sure that everything's accurate. But then, so that was kind of the initial phase. And then, like I said, as we went more through the project and we talked to other staff and they gave us feedback, you know, our our staff would be like, oh, what happened to this one? Oh, shucks, I'm sorry. You know, we have to add that in. Or, or they might have found a new company or found a new resource recently, you know, within the past several months or six months that we did not include on in that initial list. So it, it can take a long time, you know, you know, months, just months of refining, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I think that that sounds totally realistic, given how critical it is that it's comprehensive, like you said, and that the data is accurate. And so it's not something you want to rush through. Another point that you mentioned was you talked about building out the user interface. So, you know, what you're saying is you didn't just get some off the shelf solution from LiveWell, you really co-developed it with them to meet your your health system's needs. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. And what did that process look like of of really figuring out what the requirements are and what the workflows needed to be? The easiest thing, I think, is when we're shown options, you know, so that we can kind of choose, okay, I like that one or I, I would like to see this, you know, based on our needs and what we need to do, then we can kind of marry the two. So whatever options are out there, whatever, you know, live well, provided for us. And then we would come up with feedback on, yes, that's going to work for us or no, it's not. Or how about this? And then add some innovative ideas from our end to see if it'll meet our needs. You know, so it was really kind of a coordination or back and forth dance so that we can come up with something that we feel comfortable with. But it, you know, that, that wasn't the painful part. I think, you know, it was just, it was just, it was actually the fun part, I would say, because it's more of the discovery and more of the, oh, yeah, that would be great, you know, or wouldn't it be great to have a button that you could click to, you know, pull up all the providers that you need to see on one page, you know, things like that was, it was just an exciting process that we had to go through and kind of a back and forth. How about this? How about that? No, that's not going to work. Oh, yeah, that's going to work. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I would say it was exciting. Great. So could you give me an example of maybe like in the last week or two where, you know, you were doing something that you do all the time and how that workflow is now different because you're using LiveWell versus the paper-based process that you were doing before? Oh, so yeah, it basically, it decreases the amount of time and effort when I need to look something up because it's, I can look it up 
on my phone or on my laptop. You know, a lot of us in our roles in our department, we work we work remotely, and we actually have to travel to different places every day.、Um, we're just on the go all the time, and so being able to look something up really quickly. Versus having to tell someone, "I'll get back to you when I get back to the office," which is usually later tonight. You know that that has changed and is better、uh, in our workflow. So, what's the next phase for the program working with LiveWell? So, the next phase is going to involve the ability for us to actually. Inquire or send a referral to a provider that we're interested in hiring, or or the member is interested in hiring. So that's really exciting because that's like a whole nother workflow. So you know, the first workflow is actually finding a provider and looking them up and getting the names and phone numbers and seeing if they provide the services that are required for this member. So that's the first part. But then actually having to contact them and seeing if they're available. You know, is a whole nother process that can take another, you know, a few days to weeks if if you can't find anybody. So we've asked Livewell, or it was actually in the planning from the beginning that the phase two would be where we could click a button, and we think it's going to be making an inquiry or letting the provider know that we're interested and do you have availability to provide services for this member. You know, say starting next week. So that's where we're headed towards to make it a little bit more efficient for our staff to be able to make referrals. Great, and so that really helps people not only close the loop in terms of making sure the referrals happen, but it makes sure that then they're in your system, so you're tracking them. And then as you're looking at a patient, you know, from the whole person and their whole experience, you really know you have a record of of the type of services that they've been getting and the care that they've been getting as well. Mm-hmm. Great. So, I want to close by asking you what advice you would give to care coordinators as they consider integrating technology as part of their provider workflows. <laughs> well, the first thing I would tell them is please know and remember, if you don't already know, technology is not perfect. I mean, everybody wants the instantaneous answer to all their problems in the world with the touch, with the press of a button, right? So, so I would tell them, you know, technology is not perfect, but it's definitely a tool that can be used to your advantage with the right people behind it. And and my, you know, second thing to them would be be ready for the long haul, but keep your eye on the prize. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think you've spoken to that a lot today about you know no pain, no gain. That none of this stuff is easy. If it was easy, everything in healthcare would already be digitized and electronic. So we know that it's、right. not easy, right? We know that it's not easy. The technology is not perfect, but I love the point that you made about having the right people involved in the transition. I think that's so important. So I'm going to close with that. I hope today's episode inspires you to think more about how you can find your passion and. Live your best life. For more information, including links to resources that Sherry and I chatted about today, head on over to our website mosaicgrowth.com and check out our show notes from this episode and catch the boost bonus. Sherry, I want to thank you for sharing your journey with us today. And for those of you that missed the prior podcast, be sure to also catch Denise Rabido, President and CEO of EHM Senior Solutions, who shared how they're utilizing the LiveWell Health platform to refer and manage the delivery of home and community. Community-based services, and lastly, remember, anything is possible for you. Now that you've completed this episode, the next step is to join the Boost Squad for strategic insights, tips, and tricks, as well as exclusive resources designed specifically to accelerate your personal and professional growth. All this and more is waiting for you at MosaicGrowth.com. 